Hello, everyone. Welcome to Courage Bacchus. Thank you for joining my first talk show episode. I'm going to introduce myself. I am Natasha Bacchus. And I'm a former deaf Olympian. I am a runner. I am Canadian. I grew up in Toronto, and I've moved here to BC. I'm quite excited for my first show here. And I just want to introduce my guests here. First of all, we have Janice Lyons, who is our deaf interpreter for our episode. And then this is my friend and my employment counselor, Samar Sandhu. And she works from the Work BC Employment Services Center. So hi there, Samar. Hi, Natasha. How are you? I'm doing very you? well, thank you. And you? Oh, good. I just have a couple questions for you today. I was hoping you could explain uh, your experience working with deaf uh, customer, clients and your background. I've been working in this field as an employment counselor for the last 15 years. The last nine years of my, uh, my particular experience has been working with specialized populations, uh, clients that have disabilities and multi barriers to employment in government programs that are specific to assisting clients to get back to work. And working with the deaf client population or clients that are, have hearing impairment, have hearing impairments is a part of the same population that I serve as well. So for the last nine years, I've worked very closely with, this, with the deaf clients. Yeah. Okay, and how did you come to work with deaf clients? I'm very fortunate to be able to um, express that this is, it sort of fell within my role as a disability counselor and working with a very diverse uh, population, I serve clients that have all mental health issues, cross disabilities and of course clients that are deaf as well. So this is a part of my role and a part of my ability to provide services to the deaf community. Okay, and how did you uh, come work, what prompted you to work with deaf clients? Like I said, it's, it's part of my role as well it, as the disability counselor for the Work BC uh, Wally Employment Service Centre. I am responsible for providing services to clients that have disabilities and um, multiple barriers to employment that are health related or have a disability that sort of uh, is a constraint or barrier to their employment. So working with the deaf clients is also part of my responsibility and this is something, this particular population group I do really enjoy working with because it is always very fascinating to hear how they're going to be able to move through their action plan and how and what kind of successes and outcomes they actually achieve. Yeah, I agree with you. It's important that uh, everyone has their success and it's important to work with them to find them a job that they can do well in. What communication barriers have you had working with deaf clients? Primarily what we find is what we try to do when the client comes in expressing that they are looking for work and that they do have some sign of some level of hearing impairment. They could be either hard of hearing or deaf. We try to get an interpreter involved right away because that li literally does eliminate many of the miscommunications or some of the information that is absolutely critical to that employment plan. But the communication barriers that I experience personally are definitely the language variations in the ASL and that's why the, the, the interpreter is going to be so critical to that information. Some of the other barriers would also be um, the level of literacy specific to English, which I find is quite apparent within this particular population. And that definitely does become a barrier to employment as we put in accommodations for the employer, etc. cetera. Um, it also could be the, the phone and the relay system. Sometimes it's hard to um, get that um, aligned up as well for both myself and say the client who's calling in. And, um, one of the barriers that I do find with working with deaf clients is that some of them will not disclose that they have a disability to the employer. And this really does sort of uh, make it a little bit more sensitive to my work, my working relation as well, because I have a right to be able to set up the best accommodations necessary for that client to be successful. And a lot of clients, not, not I shouldn't say I, I apologize, um, some clients that are deaf do not want the employer to know that there is a hearing um, situation there. 
And this makes it um, a little bit conflictual on my part because it is my role to provide the most transparent information for the client and for the employer. Because by not doing so, then I'm also jeopardizing the employer and his staff and his uh, work environment as well. So sometimes disclosure does become a situation, but I find that if I've explained, the, I've given a really solid example and I've explained the benefits of actually disclosing and having the necessary accommodations in place allows for so much more success on the job because the client knows what they're supposed to do and the employer also understands that there could be a variation where they may have to accommodate the client's tasks or may have to make certain uh, changes within the particular role to make sure that the client is successful. So disclosure is very important in my um, experience to really bring forward. Um, the other one that I sort of, uh, I have challenges with as well is unrealistic job expectations. So clients um, that are deaf are very, very capable, but sometimes that the positions and job postings that they choose are not necessarily realistic or viable to their successful outcome or to their employment goal. Uh, so that's, that's something, it's a little bit of trying to go back to the client and coming to a midpoint where you know, it's a win-win for the client. Obviously, the client is very, it's very important for that client and um, the, uh, the client is very passionate about that particular job posting. My role is to make sure that the client does indeed have the skill sets to be able to do that job. And if those skill sets mean that we take, a po we take some, bit, uh, some interventions in place, that means that we improve their uh, training or improve their certification or maybe put in a work experience practicum to really ensure that this client will be successful once they start paid employment within that role. So that um, unrealistic expectations does sometimes bring a few challenges to that uh, uh, to that situation yeah I can see I think that's really important to have that kind of approach to make sure that there is accessibility out there and that uh, they are identified as a deaf person so that those barriers can be broken down and do you find it does help to have an interpreter interpreters are critical to any employment action plan especially with a deaf client um, what I find is initially when, when we do meet with the client, having an interpreter really does allow us to explain our services, but most importantly, really hear what the client needs. What are their barriers? What are some of the uh, limitations that they're experiencing? Are there any other health barriers that are in place that would be necessary to know of as well? Um, without an interpreter, that information will have, we'll have lost a lot of the really important information. And if I don't have that information working towards a plan, then I will not be able to set the best accommodation in place. So working with interpreters is critical to the success of an employment uh, plan. More so, it could also be that through the interventions we've put in um, workshops related to employment, it could be interviews, it could be job coaching. Um, I've referred clients that have, that have had formal assessments that have required uh, interpreters for the entire uh, duration of that session. Um, and so many other situations where an interpreter provides important and very necessary information pertaining to that situation or that particular plan. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Have you had any personal breakthroughs in your work that have made you feel uh, quite self-fulfilled after? It's, it's uh, quite ironic that you asked me that, Natasha, because the biggest success I see right now is sitting in front of me and yourself, who's been through so many challenges, and you're sitting here in this amazing place, in this amazing situation, and able to provide a service and information out there. I feel really honored that I'm a part of this process, so thank you for allowing me to be here and allowing me to speak as well. So yes, you are critical to this situation mm -hmm. as well. <laughs> um, some of the, and I, I don't, I see this as something that's going to continue to even progress and have so much more success. And like, like you said, um, it's about breaking barriers and you are a perfect example of having achieved so much within the time frame that you have. And every time you come to me with a particular um, suggestion, I first have to think, I'm like, oh my goodness, oh, well now what? But then when I think about it, then I think, oh yeah, this is <laughs> Natasha. She's, of course she's going to come up with uh, something that's brilliant and creative within that role that you always put forward. And I can't tell you what, I love working with you and it's, it's just a pleasure. Um, the other s stories that I have, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, um, thanks. The other story, um, so other success stories I have is through the Open Door Group, uh, we placed a client 
uh, a deaf client um, with as an administrative assistant with the uh, a multinational within our uh, within Vancouver here her role was to maintain correspondence within the operational department right across Canada she was very she was very good at her job at this time and she's still there and one one the feedback we got from the employer and the client herself is that during one of the seminars that she had arranged there was uh, the department heads of other uh, regions uh, were invited to Vancouver where they uh, where they met here and one of the main uh, leads that she was corresponding back east was very shocked to know that the person this he was corresponding and who's re responsible and in charge of ensuring that this entire seminar is run so well was actually deaf mm -hmm. so he was still in shock and wow. he would never even realized that uh, until that moment when she was introduced and you know, she had she had interpreter who who brought that information across, and he was just in shock. And he actually came over and hugged her, and just wouldn't just wouldn't could not acknowledge that. Oh my gosh, this is really this is what's happened. I, I believe they went, he took her out for lunch that day, and he was he was very happy. But um, so that's some of the success stories that we have. That it's not about the client's um, disability; it's about the client's ability and their unique skill sets that they bring to their job environment. And that was that. That particular skill set and her ability to work within the, her role and within that job task was phenomenal, and that's what was expressed. It wasn't a disability, yeah, yeah, but exactly. her ability to the job. Um, another um, story that, uh, sorry, another success story that is close to home, and I, I've taken a lot of uh, personal sort of um, pride in this, is a client who was working, a male uh, client who is in his early 20s. He is working sort of low-end warehousing jobs and was not able to maintain employment for the same reason that no one gave him the chance or he wasn't able to understand the information and the role within those particular low-paying or very uh, temporary positions kept changing. So just as he was trying to understand his role, something else would come up and he was not able to maintain that level of um, service or level of skills that was required. So when he came to our center, um, my role was to see that what is it that he, what are his, some of his interests, what are some of his strengths, because as, as a uh, case manager working with particular, this particular population, we want to make sure that they have the longevity within their employment, that whatever it is we do initially will set for really strong steps moving forward. So this is not something we take lightly. And so he went through the whole, whole career planning. He did very well, and one of, one of his best and strongest strengths was his hand-eye coordination, but his amazing ability to recall memory, and so his memory was very, very strong. And he was able to differentiate between very small sort of, um, uh, he had a very good perceptive ability as well. So we looked at some of the positions out there, and his goal as a child was to be a postman. But because he felt that his disability, he was not able to work as a um, postman, it was never gonna happen. Anyway, so through the process, we were able to uh, contact um, Canter Post and got him through the whole process of the interview, the job coaching, and he's still working there today. And his level, his error of his margin of error is absolutely minimum because he has he can recall every postal code within Canada. His ability to provide do the job on time within the the task required is without error. So he is just as good as anyone else out there, in fact, if not better. <laughs> oh, wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> it is. It's something that That's it's, a really inspiring story. Yeah. You know, you've brought in uh, three different personal stories, and that's fantastic. Really inspiring. Yeah. So I want to thank you for that. We're going to have a break here, and we'll be back soon with more to come. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you. We will not do as we are told. We will not dump our friends just because someone says they're not cool. We will not be shy when we have something to say. We will not let boys have all the sports. We will not be afraid to take on challenges. We will not go on diets just to look a certain way. We will not be ashamed of who we are. We are girls. We will do what's right for us. How Racism Affects My Life by Sarah Ruff. To start with, it hurts when I hear my uncle tell me that all Chinese should go back to China and stop stealing jobs. Or when the white kids say that the brown kids smell funny. 
to see the pain in my best friend's eyes when she was beat up for being South Asian, and when the guy at the grocery store kicks out the black kids because he thinks they're all thieves. It makes me wonder, if everyone is racist, is anyone really safe? Hi everyone, thanks for coming back with us. Again, I am Natasha Backus, here with Courage Backus. We have Janice, our deaf interpreter here, and we have Samar, who is my work counselor. Okay. So can you explain a little bit of the benefits of hiring a deaf employee? Like with any client who's willing to look for work or is motivated to look for work, they have a very unique set of skills. This particular population, this particular working population is, um, I find the feedback that I've received from employers is that they're very hard working. And I think because of the lack of distractions, they, they actually complete their tasks on time. And they actually do what they're supposed to do as opposed to being uh, involved in any kind of sort of hearing distractions or anything else out there. The other um, feedback that I hear is that they're very hard working. They take a lot of pride in their ability to do their work. And the, the feeling of being inclusive within an employment situation makes it even a more stronger motivation for them to actually continue providing that level of service and expertise. Um, one, another feedback I've received is that this, clients have a very strong hand-eye coordination. So I have clients who have been working in um, electronics assembly and their work is one of the finest on the table. And this particular population is also very creative to finding um, job tasks or skills that not only meet the requirements, but also make their work more effective. So the benefits are that this, they're very hardworking. They, ha they take a lot of pride in their, um, in their work. And it's always, it's a pleasure to work with them. I mean, all the client employers that I've spoken with, I've not heard any negative feedback in terms of, with respect to those particular employees that are still working there. Okay, great. That's great to hear. And what percentage of deaf or hard of hearing, maybe deaf blind people uh, are employed in BC? And what type of jobs are there in BC for uh, people? So currently, there's a, between the labor market participation of the ages of 15 to 64, in BC we have 130,000 clients that are either deaf, have a hearing, are hard of hearing, or have some level of hearing impairment, of which that translates as 4.5% of the entire working population within BC. And the, clever, uh, the kinds of jobs that um, uh, this deaf clients or this particular population can participate in are, it's hard to say because it really does depend on their skill levels and their abilities. But most common are sort of your um, data entry, stocking, merchandising, um, electronics assembly, um, and more so administrative, administrative assistant positions as well. Uh, however, I also have with me Janice, who's the head of medical and interpreting services for the Western Institute of the Deaf and Hard of Hearing, and she is absolutely paramount in providing services to her community. This mm -hmm. is amazing. I mean, I've got someone who's interpreting here, but who's also such, so important within this particular field, so yes. This is, this is Janice. <laughs> we also, um, another um, very important uh, person um, in, who is also uh, has a hearing impairment is Mark Wafer from Toronto in Ontario. And he owns several Tim Hortons franchises and he will not hear that a, a person that has a disability or hearing impairment cannot work. In fact, his staff are primarily clients that have multi barriers to employment or have some level of disability. So these are some of the very important people that are pro 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 providing a really important service in the community. I also have on the floor a wonderful lady who has who has been a part of the Work BC Centre, who has recently been uh, employed by Craftsman Collision, and um, she's currently uh, responsible for the general cleanup for the five locations that they have, and she loves her job and. 
so it's not it's not about a particular uh, particular occupation that the client can do. It's about what level of skills they have and what is it that they want to do and what kind of level of accommodations would be necessary within that particular job. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted to check in here, uh, whether it be a deaf person or they're deaf blind, maybe hard of hearing. Um, uh, usually hearing impaired uh, isn't a term that we use too much anymore. It's a bit of an old fashioned term and it, it's still used so um, it's not at all your fault. But typically it's deaf, deaf blind, uh, hard of hearing instead of the hearing impaired term which we typically don't use anymore. So thank you for uh, okay. all that information clarifying that. So I also want to make mention is that if a person who has any s situation like the ones you mentioned, if they're deaf or they have the hard of hearing, um, what they need to do is really express their employment needs to their case manager. It is absolutely critical that of information course. is relayed effectively because it allows the case manager to put in the necessary resources for that client. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of situations we find that the client is not... Um, is, is almost in fear of you know being attached to the labor market for the for just for, because there's a stigma attached or there's some other experiences that they've had however moving forward um, the case manager should be able to assess the client's needs yes, assess what of kind course. of services or accommodations or interventions will be necessary for the client to be successful and once these services are completed then move forward towards the employment side of things which is con contact employers that have or are looking for similar kind of skill sets and putting in those accommodations in place as well. So my suggestion and, and strong recommendation is that to be able to explain and to really reach out to the case manager and explain what it is that you need and how do they go forward with that. Yeah, that definitely uh, would be very helpful. And in my experience, working with Samar, um, I've always been very direct in what I need, what I'm looking for, what my goals are. And I have always wanted an interpreter there. Uh, it's part of my identity. I'm a deaf person. Um, and whether uh, you're working with anyone deaf, hard of hearing, non-deaf, it's just important to have uh, clear communication. There's a lot of barriers out there. Uh, when I was in school, and various other situations without an interpreter, there's barriers there and I just can't express myself clearly. So I actually, I quite enjoy when there's an interpreter there and I can express myself clearly. And it's been great working with you. It's great that you're here now. It's just, I'm so uh, thankful and so happy that I've been able to come here and do this. It's important that everyone is able to express what they wanna do, get their desires out there. And you can talk with your case manager, let them know what they need and just let them know exactly what you'd like to do. You don't have to, uh, be embarrassed or anything just let them know and they're going to work with you to get your desires and your uh, biggest dreams met do you feel a lot of self-fulfillment in your job so far um, every time i see there's a there's an appointment that involves a deaf client it's actually a very fulfilling um, session for me the reason being is that the the normal communication is not taking place. I'm hearing that from the interpreter, but what I am listening to is the client's body language, the mannerisms, their, their ability to convey information that's, that could be important, or it could be um, critical, or it could be even to, that's something that they're talking about that's, that's important to them. It allows me to actually understand their level of interest, how important is that particular task or that particular request for them. Um, it also, uh, that level also allows me to sort of really monitor their success in the future because if they're passionate and motivated through that session, it allows me to understand what kind of needs they would have and how do we make sure that this is, this is successful in the long range. So these, these sessions or time spent uh, with yourself is very, very fulfilling because I find that we are, I'm very grateful for everything that is that is that I have access to and working with yourself is also um, a huge satisfying uh, situation as well. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, yes. And it is a lot of work and uh, we definitely need some more time uh, you know, working with an interpreter. 
and uh, spending some time with a case manager is important and you can't spend too much time doing that. It's important to get your appointments on time and to just make sure that uh, all your needs are clearly expressed and all your skills are clear, clearly expressed and they should listen to you. If you want any more information about this, you can go onto the WorkBC website at www.workbc.com and you can take a look for yourself. And just remember, if you do need an interpreter, make sure to get one in there for you. Is there anything else you want to add, Samar? What I will say is that in the new uh, WorkBC uh, services that the ministry is putting forward, the client is can access services within their catchment. So if you're living in a particular area, you have to be able to access services within that catchment. So someone, say, who's living in Surrey, it'll be hard-pressed for them to receive services in, say, Vancouver. They have to go within the area that they reside in. And this information is, access, is accessible on the work site, uh, WorkBC website as well. Um, just touching base on what you just said is it's really important for, for a client looking for services to request right away that they are deaf and that they require the use of services so an interpreter can be actually uh, requested and put in place for that particular session. Um, and the other thing is that it is the role of the case manager, the person working with that individual, to be the most realistic, uh, to provide the most realistic and viable information persist, per pertinent to the client and to the labor market. So there's that level of trust and rapport that is, that's established between the client and the case manager. And if that's been established, then the client has every reason to be successful. Mm -hmm. All the best witches. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching Courage Bacchus. Thank you.